years ago in Europe when they were given a bad, bad time by the wrong kinds of religious people when they were heading for the, um, the gallows. Yeah, thank you, Lenny. I keep her there, and so when I forget the words, I look over and she goes. And, um, <laughs> and I, I, I keep me safe. But well, uh, on their way to the gallows, up the steps, that's what they're singing. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord. <laughs> hey, what? How does God do that? How does He do that? Never that much coercion. Never making anybody, oh, get your back on them, tell me how wonderful I am. Nothing like that happens. How does he do it and keeps doing it down the centuries? With power that isn't muscle. You know, to fill a couple of boats, um, fishing boats, to fill a couple of empty boats with fish, that's nothing to him. It's something else to take a life. People having hard times. People being born into a situation where they're um, they're not helped by the, the parents, and the, you know the story. You fill all that in, and um, they're they're helping. And yet, here he comes, up whispering, "Hello," and he gets on with his gospeling, and he does it through fathers and mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers. All of that he does. Forces no one. If you lift me up, he said, from the earth, I'll draw. He's in the drawing business. And he drew you. And he drew you. And you're glorious daughters of God. And glorious sons of God. His work. There's nobody in this room who thinks, no, I'm a self-made Christian. Yeah! <laughs> we don't believe in garbage. <laughs> That's all bills in there. But you haven't believed that since you've been a girl, are you, my boy? We, we knew. We knew. We learned it from somebody, Sunday school teacher, somebody, school teacher, who back in the day was able to tell you things about the Lord and that, that sort of stuff. Uh, and here you are, every Lord's Day, coming here. And of course, they're mostly uh, women uh, here at this moment. And uh, I forget the statistics. I used to be interested in that kind of stuff, and then I lost my interest in it. But it's ladies who have been more the center of the Christian um, sustenance uh, than the man. Do you, you, you know what I, uh, you know what I, I need to say? I was going to think, I was going to say something else, but see, there's no cure for me. I don't, I don't, I can't help it. Um, the first words the Lord said, the Lord God said was, let there be light. And he looked at the light and he said, what? Good. Not morally, suit it. Like, 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 a, like a, a fellow building a house and saying, that's just right. Oh, good. It's not moral. It fits into his purpose, you see. The light, good, he said. And then one after another, one after another. Good, good, good. And then he got to the man, chapter 2, verse 18 of Genesis. It is not good for the man to be alone. How'd that happen? Then uh, he says, not good. Good, 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 good. Not good. Not saying Adam's bad. He made him. I mean, he was flawlessly made. But alone? Not good. So God says, I'm going to make someone for him. A helper. 
The word helper means all kinds of things, of course, but you have to read it biblically. I'm saying that like I know everything. I don't, that's not my point. But, but you, if you're going to, you're going to have to study and put in the hours, right? He said, I'm going to make a helper, a counterpart that suits him. Yes? Shows him all the animals. All the animals. You remember it says he called them all together? But for Adam, no helper was found. So he makes a woman. A lot of brilliant men in, in, in older days, and a fellow called Augustine of Hippo was uh, he, he brilliant. But sometimes brilliant people talk utter nonsense. And Augustine of Hippo talked utter nonsense. He said, well, God made it because if the man got a bit lonely, she would be able to, oh, go boy your head. <laughs> He made a woman because until he made the woman, she, he was not good. Not, we're not talking about morality. He didn't fit into God's purpose. He was not the fulfillment of God's purpose. In chapter 1 it says, Let us make man in our image. And the image of God made he him Male and female created he them. Listen, there is no humankind. This is biblical. If I start getting all antsy and, and I don't know where I'm going, this is biblical. <laughs> there is no humankind. Humankind doesn't exist without both male and female. When there was a male in isolation, that wasn't humankind. That was the first phase of God creating humankind. Let us make man in our image. In the image of God made he them. Male and female created he them. And then in chapter 5 of Genesis in verse 2, in the day that he made him, he called their name Adam. Adama. Humankind. So here's the man, he's on his own. God's showing him all of this and nothing. And then God creates the woman out of the man. The man wakens up. He sees her. And the first thing he says is the first word in the Hebrew text. Now, this is me. This is my bone. My flesh. This is me. She is distinguishable from the man. But she's not separable. For God did not make mankind. Just a man and then a woman and the two of them are. That, that, that's not it. Let us make man in our image. In the image of God created he them, male and female. And, and, in the next verse, this is 126 and following, right? In the next verse, he said, I'm going to give dominion to them. And he, over everything. Uh, and he said, he blessed them and said, be fruitful. Multiply. He didn't give dominion to the fella. End of story. He, there was no fella. End of story. On his own. There was mankind. Men and women. Male and female. That was mankind. And Paul makes that clear. In 1 Corinthians 11. 11 when he says. In Christ, there is neither male without the female, nor the female without the male. He's going back to Genesis. Trust me just for now, you think, well, I don't sign, just, just for now, trust me. See, when I leave, you can check me out. 
and, and then write me a, a, a tough letter or something like that. <laughs> but trust me right now, what I'm telling you is true. There is no humankind for God has created us. There is no humankind without male and female. Man is not male or female. Mankind, humanity, is male and female. That, see, we, we don't get that. And I think it's absolutely tragic. I'm one of those who believes that as far as church structure and our liturgical gatherings like this where we worship God, the males are given the job to act as uh, the lead, yeah? But not every moment of every day. It's in our liturgical get-together. Anybody who thinks he can tell his wife, uh, this is what we will do, we're going to sell the house and, and you've got no voice. And Paul never, ever, ever, the Bible never talks that way. It's when we gather to worship. Do you know what we do here? Do you know what you do here? If a stranger walked in, doesn't know about Christ or anything else, and he'd say, men and women here, do you know what is happening here? You as a female, these as a, a male, you are reflecting the creation work of God. You male and female together just the very fact that you're a woman and that these men are men just that very fact how did that happen and God said that's how it happened it doesn't make any difference what you and I think of one another or, or think of ourselves it's what God thinks of us yeah, well, I mean, that puts the woman down. I hear a good bit of that. You don't need to be hearing a whole lot of talk about what I'm saying. Just trust me. This is a, this is a serious riptide. But look, look, and what they're saying is, if I don't mean to be rude. I'm see, I see. I hate the way I preach. I can't help it. But I, um, I hear them saying um, they're enslaving women if she's not allowed to be a preacher. If she's not allowed to be an elder, I, I don't mean to be rude here. Uh, you, you, you may uh, hold, hold that, but I, I, boy, I'm in it now, right? I'm up to my throat in a nice song, but I'm going to finish it. <laughs> so, so uh, she's not being cheated. She's not being cheated. Well, even in the Old Testament, you know, there's Paul saying in 1 Timothy chapter 2, the woman is not the teacher, have authority over the man. You know how that text. But she will be saved in childbearing. Oh, well, you know, there it is. She's a baby machine. That's what, you know, that's not what the Bible teaches at all. She's not a baby machine. She's the creation of God and without her, the man. No good. Him being alone. That's Genesis 1, 2. And then in 3, what happens? And the snake. It's the devil. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, as Satan conned the woman. So uh, forget that. It's the snake. Here he's presented in the narrative. And the snake comes, and there they are. And he says, uh, has God said to you that you can eat of the tree? She said, hey, wait a minute. And you need to believe me. The, he, I, I'm not a Hebrew scholar. I just hang around Hebrew scholars. But uh, the, he, she butts into what he's saying and rebukes him and says, no, he said we can eat of every tree, every one. That's the tree of life and everything else except that one. And he said we're not to touch it. And why was that? Why was that? 
When God said, eat of everything, see everything, ooh, eat of it all. Here too in the middle of this, there, everything is good for you to eat. Except, see that one there? He's not saying it's a poison tree. He's just saying, don't eat of that. And if you eat of it, what? He's not threatening. It's not a threat. It's a warning. Eat that. And you're dead. But the devil said, you know why I'm telling you not to eat of that tree of knowledge? He said, because if you eat of it, you will be his rival. He doesn't want you to know all kinds of stuff. Because if you get to know all good and evil, and even there, though it involves moral, good and evil, even there, it's the purpose of God, the, the good. That doesn't work, that doesn't work. The word evil, in, in a lot of reversions, and everybody knows this, it's calamity. Shall even befall a city and I not do it, God says. It's calamity, just bad things happening. He said, he said, he didn't want you to be his rival. But if you eat of it, you will be his rival. Hmm. So they did what they did. And here comes, here comes God. Hello. What have you done? And she Already, this is important, already, she says, that rascal, that rascal seduced me. He conned me. She's not a friend of his. She did wrong and, and, and she did, mistrusted God, all of that kind of thing. But as soon as she got it, she realized that is a rascal. And she turned against the devil right away. And the man, you can read it. Uh, well, you know, you can read it in that tone. Well, I mean, uh, it was that woman that you gave me. <laughs> Baloney. <laughs> but she says, he seduced me. So she already knows she's already against him. And God then says to the snake, come here, you. You will crawl. You'll eat dust and all that. You see that woman? This is all in the text. This is all in the text, chapter 3. See that woman? You made a mistake. <laughs> I want to make her your nemesis. I'm going to make her your enemy. Doesn't say that of the man. We're not denying that the man is involved in the good things that, that God then goes on to say. But that's not my point. My point is, in that text, the emphasis is on the woman. You said, see that woman? She's going to be your enemy. More than that, her children... Her children are going to be the enemy of your children. And you know what else? One of her unique children is going to walk on your head and crush you. Not the man's children, the woman's children. Well, I mean, um, I, she needed the man to get there. Well, God knows that. God knew that. He wasn't talking about the man. He wanted to put the emphasis on the woman. In the book of Genesis, in chapter 2, the woman is made of the man. Galatians 4, verse 4. The man is made of the woman. That was the old creation. Now when you get to the New Testament... It's, <laughs> women are fabulous. <laughs> women are fabulous. And if somebody says, you're robbing her of glory by not allowing her to be a preacher. 
Have you read your Bible? God makes her the one who guts Satan. God makes her the one who guts his children. John A. Jesus talks about your children of the devil, all of that. And then she is told that um, you're going to have a tough time, but your child will be the one that will destroy. And then she gets the name Eve because she's the mother of all the living. You're Eve's daughters. You're Eve's daughters. Yeah, well, you know, she'll be saved in childbearing. To read the book of Genesis and think that that means, well, that's what she's good for, having babies. That's not at all. She's saved in being the mother of all the believe, all, all of living, but all of the believing living, whose children stand against satanic children. You know who you are, you women. You are the enemies of Satan. You're the one he ended up regretting to mess with. As they say down in Texas, you don't mess with Texas, is that right? You don't mess with God's women. And so, what about the she, first Timothy 2, verse 15? She'll be saved in childbearing. There's a definite article in there. She shall be saved in the childbearing. When God makes Jesus of Nazareth, he doesn't use a man at all. He comes to this glorious young woman and says, you know the story. And it's God Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth is a creation. God created him the way he created Adam and Eve, you know that, but he reverses the story for the glory, the glory that God has purposed for you and the men who do what they're supposed to do and the women doing what they're supposed to do just just in in worshiping god see this what we're doing here and i it's 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 impossible i suppose it's impossible to say how much is going on here you know sing like that to buy the heart with the head and pray to tell him thank you for the the, the body of Christ that he used to make himself present in the world. The wine that is his blood, which is wine, but it's his blood. To do all of that, Lord's Day after Lord's Day, keeps the one story alive and vibrant and joy bringing and happiness bringing, and all kind of, I wish I could think of more words, but all of that, just does all of that good stuff here, but it's beyond what I have emotionally, and, and this kind of, kind of thing. Well, the emotions will last on. I'll go home, and then they'll feed me with something, or if I'm not fed before it, and then I'll get horizontal, and the, all the emotions will, you know, drop down. But the truth, the truth that generated the emotions never dies down. Uh, uh, yeah, I had another phrase there and I forgot what it was. <laughs> Nothing I can do about me. <laughs> hey, look, look, look. This is a place where we can come together to honor him. He's not our pal or our chum. He's not, you know, he's too big for that. We get that. But it is, it is right to honor him and think everything is from 
him, you know, the power of him. But it's also right to remember. I mentioned uh, just a while ago, uh, the word became flesh, a human, a particular human, no other human, that one. The word became flesh. He could have, he could have become an, he could have become an archangel. He wouldn't have it. He could have become one of the cherubim, one of the seraphim. Wouldn't have it. No archangels, no these marvelous creatures. He wanted to be you, one of you. What, what does it say about you? What does it say about you? That he wants and wanted and continues to want to be one of you. Is, is that not what it is? Is that not just simply hard to believe on it? True. For this young carpenter fella. Luke 3 23 says he was 30 years of age when he started preaching. Preached for something like three years and then they took him out. Well, he did on a Friday. But that was Friday and Sunday was coming. Well, not Sunday, the Lord's Day. I woke up one morning thinking it was Sunday. It scared the life out of me. And then I remembered it wasn't Sunday. There aren't any Sundays anymore. It's just Lord's Days. Yeah. Is this okay with you? Is this not a... Uh, yeah, it is. It is. When I'm a, these are rhetorical questions. I love those. I like to say the word rhetorical. Rhetorical, rhetorical, rhetorical. Eh? But in all seriousness, you are a part of a, a nation that's like no other nation in the world. I don't care American, Brit, Irish, Chinese, or what. You are a nation, a new creation of a nation. Numbers 23, 8, Balaam, now speaking the word of God. From the top of the crags, I see them. From the hills, I gaze down on them. A nation dwelling alone, not content among the nations. Old Testament Israel, all of that is taken into the New Testament. This is the new covenant people. Amen. This is you. You're a part of a nation like no other nation. God bless you for it. That the world is still standing is because you and tens of thousands and millions down each generation have stood and said, God, won't have any other gods, won't, you know. It's the last thing I'm going to say. How long have I been talking? A long time? Yeah. Well, okay, that's me done. Thank you. <laughs> God you, go ahead, you go ahead and say something else. Oh. Yeah, you Oh, let, let me, oh, okay, let me finish this off. Oh, I forgot about an invitation. No. I suspect everybody here is a Christian. I want to believe that everyone here is a Christian, thank God. But if there's something that you feel, oh, I need to say something in the presence of the brothers and sisters. If you, if you can't do that, some people can't do it. You know, they, they, to walk up and say, well, you know, but get a hold of someone, someone here. We all love one another and speak to one another and say, I need help. I, well, I've got something. If you want to, if you've got something you really want to say that fills you with joy that has happened to you in this past week or so, come up and let us. We're going to sing the song, the invitation song. But you women, you've not been robbed. 
They cannot rob you. They cannot rob you. For you've been made. You've been made to make humankind and totality of humankind function to the glory of God. And that's why Jesus was not born of a man. He was born of a woman. Turning it over from the book of Genesis. Isn't that great truth? That little girl. If we had given her more credit, if we'd given her more glory, maybe some others would not have given her too much. She just needs to be honored. And uh, I was thinking, I'm not doing it, but I was thinking of singing Ave Maria here to finish this off. That's something that will never happen in a Protestant church. But do you know all that? Do you know that Ave Maria, the Schubert version? Do you know all it is? Three verses. Three verses of scripture put together. Ave Maria. <laughs> Gratitia plena. But one. Okay. God bless you and thank you for your patience.